ready to work on making your writing easy to understand. This DLA will show you how wordiness affects your readers, recognize different types of wordiness, and start editing for clarity. So let's get started. Albert Einstein said, everything should be as simple as possible, but not simpler. Simplicity in art can be a powerful tool. As a writer, you use language primarily to convey a message to your reader. Practiced writers know to choose their words carefully, understanding each word functions to make their message clear, readable, and powerful. But many writers, including myself, struggle to articulate our thoughts simply and clearly while maintaining the power of our message. We are guilty of wordiness. Wordiness is when you like say something that's important, but with like a lot of words that you could have maybe just said in like, you know, a few words. Okay, so that definition did not demonstrate a thoughtful use of language. Rather, it used filler words, words we use to fill in the gaps of our speech, speech when we're trying to think about what to say next. When you talk, you might use filler words without realizing it. When you can't think of the right word to use, you might say, um, this gives you a break while you think without an awkward silent pause in the conversation. We do the same thing in our writing, but it's important to remove those words whenever possible. Here's the definition again. Let's follow Einstein's advice and create a simpler, more concise definition. Wordiness is using unnecessary words to make your point. A lot clearer, right? And it uses fewer words, making it more readable and more powerful. Why? First of all, time is valuable. Don't waste your reader's time. Just say what you want to say and get to your point. When your reader has to sort through a sea of words just to figure out what you're trying to say, your words become tedious and less readable, frustrating to get through. Take, for example, the following email beginning with, Dear Professor, I wanted to write to you and say that you are a wonderful, you are a wonderful teacher. The introduction, I wanted to write to you and say that, is a filler. Just say what you mean. Dear professor, you are a wonderful teacher. Now you've respected your professor's time and the statement has more power because it isn't lost in filler words that waste space. So don't belittle or devalue your own ideas. In fact, cutting out extra words makes room for more specific evidence and clearer ideas. Making the remaining words the most powerful words. Let's look at one more example in the sentence, I love you. We wait to say this sentence to significant others because these three words have a lot of power. You wouldn't use the word love for the first time and qualify it with, I really love you, or I just love you, or I literally love you, or I basically love you, right? If the sentence makes sense without these words, remove them. Okay, so now you know why it's important to edit for wordiness. Let's talk about how to do it. Write first, without worrying about filling the space on your paper with unnecessary words, remember we said filler words take up space while you're trying to think of what to say, so let them. If it helps you at first to use them, use them. Get your ideas on paper. Then schedule time in your writing process to edit. Take a break between writing and editing your paper, even if it's just for a few minutes, to grab a cup of coffee and a cupcake. When you come back to your ideas, come with the specific intention to edit them for wordiness. When it's time to edit, edit with a plan in mind, such as reading your paper out loud and marking sentences that sound wordy. When editing wordy sentences, look for patterns of wordiness. The acronym PEST, P-E-S-T, 
which stands for prepositional phrases, extra words, slow wind-ups, and to-be verbs, can help you remember what those patterns are so you can mark them in your writing. Let's start with prepositional phrases. A prepositional phrase is a combination of a preposition and a noun. So let's back up and talk about prepositions. In general, prepositions are words that show time and space relationships. Prepositions about time include words like at, in, after, until, before, and during, while prepositions about space relationships include words like on, to, for, around, through, and near. A prepositional phrase combines a preposition with a noun, which is a person, place, thing, or idea. For example, during the spring semester is a prepositional phrase. During is the preposition, while semester is the noun. Another example of a prepositional phrase is on the bus. On is the preposition, while bus is the noun. Stringing too many prepositional phrases together in a sentence can make a sentence wordy. For example, the sentence, Bobby decided to retake the class at a later date and time, is wordy since it strings together two prepositional phrases, at a later date and in time. That prepositional phrase string could be replaced with a single word, later. Bobby decided to retake the class later is less wordy. Humorist and newspaper reporter Mark Twain said that writers should strike out every third word on principle. While that sounds a bit drastic, removing extra words will make your ideas easier for your reader to understand. Noticing repetition is one way you can get rid of extra words. For example, in addition, another thought that I also had was that we could meet today. The words addition, another, and also mean the same thing. So using just one of those words is enough. We could also meet today. Another way to eliminate extra words is to condense wordy phrases into single words. Phrases like, due to the fact that, the reason for, for the reason that, in light of the fact that, considering the fact that, and this is why, can all be condensed into a single word, because, since, or why. So lose extra words in a sentence like, due to the fact that the deadline was approaching, traffic increased, and replace them with something simpler. Since the deadline was approaching, traffic increased. Another place to look for wordiness is at the start of your essays, paragraphs, or sentences. As in baseball, some writers do a slow wind-up with extra words before actually pitching the ball by saying what they mean. Getting rid of those extra words makes their message clearer. For example, the beginning of this sentence rambles on. In regards to the email that you sent me the other day about ordering a copy of Silent Spring for me, yes, please order it. The point of the writer's message is buried at the end of the sentence. Cutting words from the beginning and rearranging the remaining words gets to the point quicker. Please order one copy of Silent Spring for me. The final pest to look for in your writing are the to-be verbs am, is, are, was, were, be, being, and been. Since those words tend to make sentences wordy, limit the to be verbs in your writing as much as possible. Getting rid of to be verbs involves rearranging sentence structure. Try using subjects that do something rather than have something done to them. To edit this sentence, the party was thrown by the anime club. Switch the end of the sentence with the beginning of the sentence. The party is the thing receiving the action. The anime club are the agents, the ones doing the action. Rearranging the sentence 
puts the agents of the action at the beginning. Now the subject is the anime club. And what are they doing? Throwing a party. The anime club through the party is a more active way of writing the sentence, and it's less wordy. Sentences that begin with there plus a to be verb tend to be wordy as well. As a general rule, don't start sentences with there is, there are, there was, or there were. To get rid of there plus a to be verb, you'll need to cut and rearrange words in a sentence. To do that, first look for the agent of the sentence. In this sentence, there are several classes that Serena plans on taking this semester, English, math, and art. Serena is the agent, so she should be at the beginning of the sentence. Next, choose words from the sentence that tell what the agent is doing. Serena plans on taking English, math, and art classes this semester. Now that you know what pests to look for when eliminating wordiness, budget time in your writing process for getting rid of them and making your writing as clear as possible. Your readers will thank you.